I think it's about time we tackled that broken roof. Hiya folks, welcome back to the show. If you remember when we got the extension built and the roofers, our professional roofers, put that in inverted commas, left our roof with various problems, nothing particularly major that I could be bothered calling them back about because really I needed to crack on, but it was all stuff I knew I could fix myself. It needs to be done, I want it done before the winter kicks in. Also, I wanna get a few last outside jobs done, such as getting a second coat of paint on all of the barge boards and the soffits and things like that. And I don't wanna do that until I've fixed the broken roof. So I've already fixed the broken tile. In the scheme of things, that was relatively easy. In fact, I can't even tell which one it was. But as for the dry verge, that's a bit of a different story. And while I'm up here, I might as well try and sort it out. Getting these off without breaking them is really quite tricky. Anyway, the whole purpose of the dry verge is to cover up this edge of the roof. And it's to basically make sure that like birds and animals and bees and things don't get under your roof because if you leave a gap anywhere especially around this kind of neck of the woods where nature takes over very very quickly if you leave a gap birds will nest under your roof straight away but if you remember the problem is is that we've got a gaping gap up this side here which you definitely shouldn't have the whole point of this is that that should be flush against the barge board it is on the other side but on this side for whatever reason it isn't of course it was forecast for clear weather today and i thought today would be a good day to tackle this job it's uh, started chucking it down anyway we'll completely bypass the fact that they've not used the straps that are supposed to go in the end of the battens to stop the wood from splitting such as life but the main problem is that on a lot of them they just hadn't hammered the nails fully home this is a bad example because this one is hammered fully home and this particular one has a different problem which i'll show you in a minute let me just quickly try and cut this off Sorry, had to do that off camera because my gimbal went bananas. A little tip for getting these off without completely destroying them is that if you uh, angle grind the top of the nail head, then it gets really hot. And when it gets really hot, it melts the plastic and then you can just pull it away. You've got a million other holes to choose from, so it doesn't really cause a problem. And they've not put them centrally in the battens anyway, so I wouldn't be reusing that nail hole. Anyway, these are an absolute pain in the backside to get on and off, but uh, I'll do my best. But anyway, you can see here, see that nail just needs hammered home. So that's easy enough, but unfortunately I can't get to the next nail along without taking this one off. So I have to take the entire dry verge off all the way down to the bottom and then start again and do it all the way up. But there's another problem here, and that is that it clearly says in the instructions that the batten should overhang the barge board by about 30 millimeters. And this just seems to be wildly different for every single one. So this one is about 40 millimeters. That one is about 25 millimeters. That one's about 45 millimeters. That one's 40. That one's 25 mil. Every single one is cut off at a different length. So I'm going to have to try and get some sort of standard length to these so that when I reattach them, that the dry verge sits properly against the barge board. There's also this slight issue with these, um, with the felt having just been kind of folded up inside it. I'm not sure if you're supposed to do that. I don't think you should. I'm pretty sure that should just be cut off. Um, let us know in the comments what you think about that. It's cut in a complete random mess anyway. Up the top there it's kind of flush and then here it kind of goes in a bit of an S shape. Here it's like massively long. So uh, yeah, I'll get the rest of these off and uh, tidy up this edge and I'll come back to you. Another one done, but uh, yeah, that one's not nailed in at all. So that's brilliant. That one's actually all right. And I've already 
screwed that to the barge board and added an end cap because I think you might have seen in previous videos that they hadn't bothered installing the end cap to stop birds and things getting up the edge. There we go, that's a bit neater. I do still need to trim off a couple of the battens, but I'll do that when I get to them. Unfortunately, when they've originally installed these, they've cracked quite a lot of them. Luckily, we've got three leftover ones from the original install, so we can use those to replace the most damaged ones. I'm screwing these in place just because if they ever need to come off in the future, it'd be much easier.
There we go, another job finished off for the professionals. That wasn't too bad actually, it took probably half a day or something to do all of that. So just to summarise what I've done, I've taken off the entire dry verge, I've fixed the broken tile, I've trimmed off all of the excess felt that was just kind of left dangling about in the wind, I've trimmed back the battens that were left too long, refitted the entire dry verge and now it doesn't have a one inch gap up the side of it, and I've done my best to redress the lead around the top there. Oh, and I added an extra little piece of leftover dry verge at the top there, I don't know if you can see it, but uh, that just fills that gaping hole that was left there at the top. I don't know if you remember that as well. And again, as I say, I've done my best to dress the lead around that, but uh, I don't want to risk it damaging the render. So I think that'll be all right. I'm not sure, maybe I should, could shove something up that little tiny gap at the top there, but I don't think anything's going to nest in, in that little gap. Don't judge my lead dressing skills, but uh, hopefully that's a lot better than it was before. So I think we'll call it a day on that one. It's 100% better than it was before. All nice and weather tight, ready for the winter. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Is there anything I should have done differently? Obviously it's a shame that I've had to come back and sort out jobs like this that the roofer should have done properly in the first place, but Unfortunately, it's par for the course these days. By the way, quick kitten update. You may remember that we got Nugget a couple of weeks ago and uh, we did get chicken as well. So we've got chicken and Nugget. They appear to be sleeping at the minute, so I'll not disturb them. But um, they are thick as thieves. You all right there, chicken? Nugget's at the back there. It's quite funny because we got chicken a couple of days after Nugget, but they are brothers. We weren't sure if we were going to be able to get them, but then um, chicken became available, so we thought we'd get the two of them. And because they'd been apart for a couple of days, Nugget was very territorial, but they are absolutely best buddies now, and they just go crazy around the house. So uh, yeah, I'll leave you on some of that footage right at the end. Nugget's definitely the softer out of the two, and uh, Chicken's a bit more inquisitive, but he's not a massive fan of being picked up and stroked and stuff. He doesn't mind, it's just Nugget's an absolute softie. As soon as you sit down, Nugget will be on your knee. Chicken's a little bit more kind of independent. Anyway, we'll leave it at that for today. As per usual, look after one another, be nice to each other, and we shall see you next time. Tatty bye!